A while back, I started this series about bad games from popular franchises and chose Mario Party 9 as my first entry. However, Mario Party 10 is by a long shot the worst of the Mario Party games. Not only was so little learned from the problems with the previous game, but it is boring to play and was rushed because of a failing console. Wanna know why Mario Party 10 is the worst Mario Party game? Welcome to Classic Duds. Before we get into the game itself, we have to put something in context. By 2014, the Wii U had already tanked. It was becoming Nintendo's worst-selling home console, and people at the time thought Nintendo was going to be the next Sega, but the release of Nintendo Switch three years later pretty much killed that thought. Nintendo was losing billions of dollars as a result of the Wii U's failure, and this is going to show in the effort they put into various Wii U games after 2014, as well as their critical and sales reputation. Now, the first thing you see in Mario Party 10 is the menu, and no joke, it looks like a second grader designed this in Photoshop. There's no menu background, no title screen or introduction either, and watch this. Amiibo! 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 Every single time you select the Amiibo option, it says that. Now, the character roster is actually an improvement over Mario Party 9. Donkey Kong is playable for the first time since Mario Party 4 and Rosalina is a newcomer. But when you get to the boards, gone are the days where you roll to decide who goes first. Instead, the game just decides the order you go. And also, the car that everyone hated in Mario Party 9 is back. I will state right now that the biggest problem I have with Mario Party 10 I can tell the game designers wanted to improve over Mario Party 9, but simultaneously, they never realized what the problems with that game were. There is a new mechanic in Mario Party 10, and I call it Caged Bowser. On the Wii U gamepad, there will be Bowser in a cage, and every number you roll unlocks one of the keys. If all six keys are unlocked, the captain loses half his mini stars. Much like Mario Party 9, it's absolutely not fair to lose ha entire board because it happens to be your turn when the cage is unlocked. Even worse, I've heard this particular Mario Party predetermines your roles, meaning the game can be cute and give you the role necessary to unlock the cage. Looks like Mario Party 9, there are two boss minigames. There are also slightly more ways to get minigames, like you still have to land on spaces, but you can still get hidden minigames, they appear more frequently. So I guess a tiny bit more strategy than there is in the previous game, but still, I'd prefer it to be like the classic games, where it happens at the end of every player's turn. Now, there are five boards in Mario Party 10, so that's a downgrade from the seven boards that were in Mario Party 9. Unlike that game where it had either really chaotic boards or two interesting ones, Mario Party 10's boards are not interesting at all. There is way less opportunity to lose half your mini stars, which I'd normally say that's a good thing compared to Mario Party 9, but this gameplay without those frustrating elements makes this game absolutely boring to play. You can't even make the minigames a good or a good argument you could with Mario Party 9, as this game's mini games are just aren't that great. Now there is one other mode I like to share and that's Bowser Party. Unlike the normal game where it's a chore to sit through, Bowser Party is a broken mess. It is heavily unbalanced in Bowser's favor. Once all four players do their rolls, Bowser rolls, and if he doesn't roll enough to catch Team Mario, he can re-roll, and if he rolls enough, he'll just catch Team Mario. The goal in Bowser Party is to either Team Mario to make it to the end and get the star from a random enemy, or for Team Bowser to drain all of Team Mario's hearts. This has been out for eight years now, and I've never once seen Team Bowser lose a round. The minigames are also Bowser-oriented. The minigames are how Bowser drains Team Mario's hearts. Yeah, Mario Party 10 is awful. I have heard defense from Mario Party 9 for people that grew up playing that game, but really no one defends Mario Party 10. This game was pretty much rushed as Nintendo knew the Wii U was doomed at this point, and this was only continue to haunt them with the financial losses, deteriorating Wii U sales, and poorly received games on the Wii U. 
In retrospect, the fact that Nintendo survived the Wii U era is an absolute blessing. Now, I'm not necessarily done with Mario Party. The franchise would return with Super Mario Party on the Switch, and it is a very divisive entry in the series, so give this video a like, because if this gets a boost in the YouTube algorithm, I'll finalize the Mario Party Duds trilogy and cover Super Mario Party. Thanks for watching. Thank you.